All right, so let's get started. So this is the slide where we left off last time. And what we're after here, we had, we had solved the radial diffusivity equation. And I'll write it down in a second, but uh, what we're at after here is we have some, there's some reference or equivalent radius that's unknown to us at this point, but this is sort of what we're after. We need to solve for this equivalent radius because at the equivalent radius is the average pressure in the grid block, and we need the average pressure in the grid block, okay? So let's see if I can... I don't want to go to another page yet. Let me see if I can move this thing. Sorry, just making room. Um, okay, so we had that the solution, right? I'll just re rewrite it. Is P ref minus Q W mu B W two pi K H. National log of R EQ. Sorry. R R EQ. Right. And so what we said is the this equivalent radius is the radiance is the place in the grid block where there's the average pressure. And remember, in a finite difference scheme, what we're doing here, there's only one pressure in a grid block. So it has to be the average, right? So what we did was we said, okay, so the, the reference pressure is then the pressure in that grid block. Okay? And then we, and that's the reason I wanted to reuse this slide, we we had written, written down the mass balance on this grid block, on the ELF grid block, where we have this Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4 coming in from the neighbors, right? And we made the assumption, or if we didn't make it last time, we're going to make it now, that they're all delta x apart. So they're all delta x. So then, if we, instead of, if we now evaluate the solution to the diffusivity equation at R equals the center of the neighboring, neighboring grid block, right? So if R is equal to the center of the neighboring grid block and they're all delta x apart, what is R? Delta x, okay? And what's the pressure at the center of the neighboring, neighboring grid block? It's P1, P2, P3, or P4, right? And so, you know, if we were to write it down for one of them, um, we'd have that, you know, P1 is equal to PL minus QW mu BW right so all we did all we did was evaluate this equation at the center of the P1 grid block which is delta x away all right well, does everybody see that that, since they're all delta x, whether I evaluated it at P1 or at P2 or at P3 or at P4, 
I get the same thing. So they're all going to be, so P2, P3, and P4 are all going to have the same right-hand side. Okay? So now I have an equation for P1, P2, P3, and P4 that I can plug into here for P1, P2, P3, and P4. Right? So I'm just going to plug that in and, and then everyone know, you know, since P1, P2, P3, and since they're all equal, I can just say four times P1, right? Or four times the right-hand side. Because they're one, two, three, four. I'm adding up the four times, okay? So if I do that, sub make those substitutions, get into the mass balance equation, I get 4 times that right-hand side, PL minus QW mu BW 2 pi KH times the natural law. Okay. So does everyone see there's a 4PL here? A positive 4PL and a minus 4PL. So those cancel. Right. The, this this four? The one over here on the right. Well, so I'm distributing the four, right? So the four PLs cancel, but then I still have to multiply four times QW mu. Okay, so it looks like the KHs will cancel, the mu BWs will cancel, and then I have minus a minus, so I, that's a positive, right? So then I have a, and then 4 divided by 2 is 2. So I have 2 QW over pi times the natural log of delta X REQ. All right. I can divide out, I can divide by QW, so then I have 1. Or in fact, I can, I can invert this whole first term, right? So divide by QW over 2 and multiply by pi, and then I have pi over 2 is equal to this guy. And then if we take the exponential of both sides and solve for REQ, we get that REQ is equal to delta x e to the minus pi over 2. Anybody got a calculator out? What is e to the pi over 2? Zero point two oh seven eight delta x. So this is known as the Peaceman correction. So named after a guy, Peaceman, who figured this out in the 50s, wrote an SVE paper on it.
So now that we have our EQ, remember, you know, we have this equation. This is a general solution. Okay, so the reference pressure in, the, in this reference radius, uh, they're, they're sort of arbitrary. We can choose them to be anything. It's just as long as we, we have to know the pressure at that radius. Right? As long as we know it, then we can sort of choose it to be whatever we want. So before we chose it to be PL and, and REQ, and then we went through that whole exercise to find out what REQ is, but now we have REQ. REQ. So let's now choose the reference to be the wellbore pressure. That means that the reference radius is the radius of the wellbore. And we're going to now evaluate R at REQ, which we know now. So if we're evaluating R, uh, REQ, then what's the right-hand side? What is this? This is the pressure at R. And now R is REQ. REQ corresponds to the average pressure in the grid block. What is that? What symbol have we been using for that? PL, PL, <clears throat> so then if we solve for this equation for QW, We're going to get what we started out with, what we, or at least what I mentioned we were seeking. Where J is equal to 2 pi KH QW. We're going to add a skin factor here. And of course, REQ is equal to roughly 0 0.2 delta x. So this is the productivity index. And you guys know what a skin factor is? From, you know, it's like for formation damage or something. So now we have a way to more accurately equip our model with wells. Um, and, you know, this is. This piecement correction is used in, well, it's used in CMG, so it's, it's used in uh, most commercial reservoir simulators. And there may be little twists or variations on it for uh, if you actually, you can, you can extend it to have um, for arbitrary grid block sizes, right? We made the assumption that all of them would be equal. But you can, you can it's a pretty easy extension. So then what do we do with it? So if 
we write down our mass balance and transmissibility form, for the ELF grid block. And I went ahead and put the n plus ones on there. So this is for, this is, would be for an implicit method. We have this QL over there. And this QL is where we're going to include our this little J W P L right. and in keeping with the in keeping with the tradition of putting things we Putting things we um, are solving for, the times we are solving for uh, on the left hand side of the equation, then we'd have Okay, so the p n plus ones are the ones we're solving for. Everything on the right-hand side we know, right? We know the, the pressure at time n, and we know uh, this is for you know a constant bottom hole pressure well. We would know the pressure at the well bore, and so then in matrix form. We have just this small modification to our implicit equation. So this guy is another diagonal matrix, just like B. So if we had a, if we had, say, a four grid block system and there was a well in the third entry then J would just be something like that and then likewise Q would be So now you have enough information to complete your project. 
expect all of you to be done by the weekend. Now that your thermo test is over. <laughs>